Hello everyone, it's a lecture of Navigant Company dedicated to pedometer algorithm and how it is used for indoor navigation applications. Nowadays, modern gadgets like smartphones, smartwatches, iPads and game consoles are equipped with, with lots of different microsensors like accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometers, light sensors and others. These sensors help to detect which kind of motion the gadget is subject to, rotation, shaking, sweeping and etc. On top of that, it is even possible to detect which kind of motion the user of this gadget is experiencing. For instance, either he's walking or running, lying or standing, clubbing stairs, shaking or waving hands, and etc. Such capabilities find application in many areas, such as sports, healthcare, video gaming, and many others. The algorithm responsible for this is called pedometer. The basic idea of pedometer is pretty simple and is based on detection of specific peaks of acceleration magnitude. When user is standing still, the magnitude of acceleration remains nearly constant, except for the cases when someone is performing sudden movements with his hands. While during motion, specific patterns can be observed, which help to detect moments of steps. However, before proceeding to analysis of acceleration patterns, some pre-processing of the data has to be performed. The reason is that in practice, the incoming signals are subject to noise influence. Moreover, even when the device remains static, it will still experience acceleration magnitude due to the presence of gravity force. Thus, before proceeding to analysis, one has to first filter the high-frequency noise from the measurements, which is usually done using low-pass filters, and then adjust the incoming measurements for gravity acceleration g, as it is always present and doesn't bring any useful information. After filtration stage is finished, there are several typical approaches to detect steps. The most common and simple idea is to introduce a specific threshold value, figure on the left. The moment when acceleration magnitude goes beyond the threshold is considered as the beginning of the step, and then, when acceleration goes below the threshold, the end of step is detected. Several additional checks can also be applied to filter out the false step detection, for instance, if step duration was too short or too long. On the right figure, one can see the chart of acceleration magnitudes along with several steps detected. While for most applications, like fitness trackers, detecting and counting the number of steps seems to be enough, for indoor navigation applications, we also need to estimate the length of the performed steps. Formulas for step length estimation are various and usually depend on maximal minimal values of acceleration magnitude, mean acceleration during step time interval, and or the duration of this step interval itself. Now, this is all for the pedometer discussion. In our next lecture, we will show how a complementary filter can be applied to estimate device orientation based on readings from gyroscope and magnetometer, and how one can combine pedometer and complementary filter in a so-called pedestrian debt reckoning algorithm to reconstruct person's trajectory without knowing any additional information.